I believe that we are at a time in history that we have never, ever been at previously. And I also believe that coaching has been given birth by consciousness itself for the very sake of awakening our world. Now, I've been curious as a coach, what is keeping us from our brilliance? Because you and I know that if we answered the question ourselves, how much of our potential are we using? or we ask those around us, it's a very small percentage. And years ago, I got curious, well, what is keeping us from what we want in the world? Now, we all know as coaches that there's the gremlin, right? There's that voice in our head. It's called so many things. I call it the trickster. It's called the inner critic, monkey mind. And I got curious as a coach, well, if It would be my job, wouldn't it, to help people understand how much impact that's having. But then I'd better find out myself. So I actually started to ask the question, well, how much is that voice having its way with us? And I read somewhere in Deepak Chopra's book that we had 14,000 thoughts a day, so I had a place to ground from, right? For 13 years, I have walked around asking that question. And I want you to answer it for yourself. If we have 14,000 thoughts, how many of those thoughts are that voice? Well, I've got to tell you that over and over again, whether I was at GE or IBM or NASA scientists or individuals anywhere, there was a common theme of 95 to 99.9%. Think about that for a moment. And then the next question, of course, I have to ask is, what's the impact of that in the world? And I don't think you have to look too far, do you, to see what the impact of that in the world is? And then what would happen if we didn't live inside that voice? Because I actually believe that's what's going on. We're like fish in water. We live inside that voice. And then, oh, by the way, what's the other percentage? So I believe that ego is that voice that is, you should have to, ought to, you shoulda, woulda, coulda, you ought to do it better, you ought to do it different, that 98%. And then what is the other percent? People can name it, they know what it is. It is that heart in us. It is that creativity. It is the beauty that shines out of us. It's the nature that we see in everything, and it's that movement that we can trust within us at any given point. And, and I believe as coaches it can be as simple as that. If we only got one chance in the world, introduce them to that voice and let them know that voice is not who they are. But instead, that who we are when we are having our way is actually not only that other small percentage, it's the whole of who we are, and that other voice is the cloud cover. Well, I can tell you that I've worked with people again and again, and honestly, the minute they get in their what I call essence, they actually rest. They go into a resting place. They move from their heart, and what really does become possible is simple answers to complex problems. They get clear and grounded from their heart what it is that they want at a deeper level. They trust themselves in a more profound way. They don't go to their head to look for answers anymore. They actually go within, and they actually uh, listen to the world in a broader way. And they can hear things and see things and experience things that they didn't have access to before. And so, honestly, do we want to go to our head or do we want to go to our heart? Do we want to go to the eating, drinking, planting part of us, which is pretty rote, or do we want to use our creativity, which is who we are when we are being ourselves?